Hey guys, Lissa here, and today I want to go over all the Dark Moon prizes, the best, the worst, which ones you should auto pick, what you need to think about when you're picking your spells. I really like the Dark Moon prizes. I think they add a lot of complexity to the game, but not too much. I don't know. I, th I think it, it makes you think a little bit more instead of auto playing, which is nice. It really helps with certain heroes, give them a little catch up mechanic or value mechanic. I, I just think it's really cool. So let's go over the Dark Moon prizes. We're going to talk about why you should pick certain things for certain heroes. What's the best? What's the worst? Okay, let's get into it. Turn one prizes. All right. So with turn one prizes, first of all, never, ever, ever pick the freaking banana. If you dare pick big banana, <laughs> don't do it again because it is by far the worst it's just barely any value in the early game uh compared to all the rest the best spell to pick is might of storm wind this is really powerful because your board has a good size and you should be at least tying or winning games with it it's going to be challenging to lose games with this unless uh your opponent has that in their kale toss or something like that so Might of Storm, very good because you feel comfortable leveling on curve because you have that early tempo. After that, all the other things are kind of dependent on who you're playing and what's going on. Now there's Pocket Change, which adds two gold to your hand. And then there's Gotcha Gift, which discovers a minion that's tier one. There are three minions tier one that would sell for two gold. So I would suggest always picking the tier one minion over the two gold in hand, just because the tier one minion acts as the gold, but it uh, has a minion form. So you have more size on the board. So that's something you should consider. Now, if there's two tokens out of the game that turn, let's say there's no Murlocs and no beasts, it's going to be a little bit challenging. It could give you still some early tempo and one gold at least. So I'd still like it more than the two gold. Rocking and rolling, very good with mill house. Uh, so your next three refreshes cost zero. It also is really nice with heroes that can kind of power level. So you level, get a free re refresh, sell, and buy something from a higher tier. Uh, level, refresh, sell, buy something from the higher tier. So it kind of acts like Nas Dormu. Just be careful with the way you use rocking and rolling. I see people pick up the uh, prize and then just use it. Do not use it right away. Do not use it until you need it. So you need to think about how you're spending your gold that turn. And if you do not have the money to roll to get to a higher tier, then you might need to use it. But uh, do not use it right away because you might not even need it till tier four or something. So be careful with this card the good self with just one health i i'm not a fan of it i don't pick it I, I, it's not for me um new recruit i like i think that's kind of a safer pick if none of the other ones kind of fit with your hero i'd pick new recruit the only reason i don't like new recruit is with certain heroes if you're not purchasing from the board very often for example um elise elise's curve is to level use map level use map level use map so she's not buying from the shop so buffing the shop doesn't help her there's characters like that like yasaraj is kind of the same um but for characters that you need to find specific minion types so a, a type forcing hero like jaraxxus shamvala uh flurgle something like that hi pyra she agrees um then i like this card because it lets you find those things you need you have a higher odd of finding it or also a hero that forces pairs or triples like uh zephyrus i like new recruit for that i think that's all i have for prize turn one and i hope that's helpful don't pick big banana turn two prizes now this is where it gets interesting uh there's a lot of cool tricks to this and this is on the turn where you're about to really pop off or you've been dying and you're about to die, or you're really far ahead, or you're about to find this piece that builds your comp around. This is around that turn. So all these cards kind of will help out with that. And we'll talk about why or how you can do it. My least favorite, I talked about how banana was my least favorite or the last one. My least favorite for this is the Evolving Tavern. I just don't like it. One of the worst heroes was Lady Vaj, so Evolving Tavern's like that, and it's just not very good. Unless you, let's say, on the turn you're offered it, you see your shop and it has a bunch of four drops, and you can evolve into a bunch of five drops or something. Otherwise, don't pick that one. Least favorite. If you are behind on board, if you've been losing every turn, you need to take a power play. 
the most powerful play is either the bouncer because that's five five and taunt so that is like a power spike right then and there gruel's rules is a very good card it gives two two each turn but if you're about to die you need to take the bouncer over gruel rules because gruel rules will not beat out the bouncer for three turns and if you don't have three turns gruel rules isn't as good you're assuming if you take gruel's rules that you're going to make it at least three more turns the bouncer is more stats so keep that in mind gruel rules is great if you have cleave divine shield um something you know that's going to stay on your board because maybe at this time your board is something you want to all sell all the stuff off later if the things on your board aren't things you want to keep on your board gruel rules isn't good but if there's something you know is going to stick around for a while gruel rules is great one of my favorite cards is on the house on the house is discover a minion from your current tavern tier it's really good in this kind of economy power level meta when i mean that is like one of the top heroes are elise omu Maev, uh, Rafam. These are heroes that power level and get to tier five and six really fast. So if you're playing one of these heroes, you're probably tier five when you get this card. You can just power level to six, use the card, um, and maybe even sell some things and buy something from the shop that's tier six. So you can get two tier sixes in one turn. Absolutely insane. So anytime you're playing a power level hero, I would take on the house. Also, if you have like a pair in hand and you really need a triple to like build your comp well on the house is fine. If you're behind and you know on the house can give you something you need. I think it's safe because it's like three gold basically and gives you a card. You can discover it. Sometimes when I get things that I don't really care for, I'll take great deal, which uh, reduces leveling. If you have a hero that levels really easily, then don't take this. Obviously, like Shanvala or something like that, something that You've already leveled a lot and it's not too hard but let's say you're playing a hero you're really stuck you need to build your comp up a bit more before you feel comfortable leveling so you're not gonna level for a couple turns then take great deal because you're like okay i'm gonna stay on tier four i'm gonna take great deal that way once i feel com more comfortable to level tier five it's gonna be really cheap so that's when i would take great deal brand's blessing is interesting you can take brand's blessing a lot and um do some powerful turns especially if there's murlocs in your lobby if there's murlocs in your lobby and you're at least tier four or five you can transition into murlocs really easily you can also find a cadgar and tokens and do a token transition if you've ever seen that done or if you've done that yourself you can do a cadgar token transition with brand's blessing so you can just hold it in hand and start collecting uh, tokens and Cadgars and then just pop off. Brand's Blessing does not stack with Brand. So if you have a Brand on board, this does not work like twice. So I think Brand's Blessing is like a really safe pick. You do not need to use it on the turn, uh, but you can pick it up on the turn to kind of get a power spike if you're behind, or you could pick it up to use in the future if none of the other cards are good. If you're given like Tavern and um, the Bouncer, but you don't need the Bouncer or something like that. Time Thief is interesting. That is discover a minion from your last opponent's warband. A lot of the time I'll look at my last opponent and be like, eh, I don't need their stuff. But what you should also do is look forward to your next opponent and kind of look at all the opponents on your, um, every, every, what everyone's playing. Let's say you're trying to go elementals, but you're missing a couple pieces and you notice at least four people in your lobby are going elementals. Maybe this is a really good piece because the person you're about to play will have something you need. This could help you discover a triple. This could help you find a key piece. Someone already has a brand, a light fang, a baron, a nomi, something like that. So I would look at time thief and you do not always have to use it on the turn. You can hold on to it. All right. The last one is the unlimited coin. Gain one gold this turn or turn to your hand. This one's nice. I think it's a really flexible play. Uh, it allows you to do a little more per turn. Uh, it works with Millhouse well. So I would definitely consider the Unlimited Coin as like that flexible play. I always, I feel like I'm always taking Great Deal or Unlimited Coin as my flexible plays. I really don't mind any of these. I think it's just being aware of where you're at in the game. Do I need to power spike? Okay, take Bouncer or Brand's Blessing. Am I really far ahead and then I can just shoot off and just like go nuts okay i'm gonna take on the house do i have something on board that i want to buff forever okay girls rolls is fine yeah just don't take evolving tavern because it sucks okay surprise so turn three this one again is just like very dependent on what you're doing 
if you have a hero power that is done i highly suggest discovering a new hero power because this card is very powerful let's say you're playing omu or you're playing elise or reno and you're done with the hero power because you already leveled all the way or you already used your reno hero power something like that something where your hero power is done or you had an early game passive hero power no longer use it this is great it can help you discover Zephyrus hero power or Reno hero power, or it can help you discover Lich King hero power or Illidan. Illidan's hero power is really good late game. So yeah, I really like discovering new hero power. Sometimes you whiff, but it's still nice. Ice block is OP if you're like top five and you just really want to get top four because you earn points for top four. So, you know, I'm never against just a free ice block. Some of these cards are very good tech cards though, which is like give a di minion divine shield or double a minion's attack or bananas. So let's talk about that. If you have a poison minion, I highly suggest giving a minion divine shield. Or if you have a big taunt, that's really nice on a taunt. Uh, double minions attack. I don't like this one as much, but I do if I already have minions that have divine shield. So then if you have like a cyclone or something that already has divine shield, then doubling that attack is really great. Faux Reaper, stuff like that. If you already have divine shield, take double a minions attack. If you have high health, high attack or poison, take divine shield. Bananas. You can use bananas to play around things. Like you've seen in my recent videos, I took bananas to play around a zap. And it worked out because it turned out my opponent did have zap. So bananas is also a safe play. You could just put it on all your divine shield or cleaves and stuff like that. Just get your means a bit bigger. Some people do not realize that when you take bananas, you can get big bananas or regular bananas. So you'll get a few big bananas, hopefully. <laughs> So repeat customer is return a friendly non-golden minion to your hand and give it to two. There's a lot of different reasons to use this and you have to think about it really carefully. Sometimes I see people always want to use it because they have like a cave hydra and mama bear. That's not always the play. Mama bear adds four, four stats, banana adds way more than that, right? So uh, just be aware that repeat customer isn't always good, but sometimes it's amazing because, okay, like what if you have a Malgadon in hand and then you held on to the brand's blessing card so you get double battle cries. Let's say you're board locked, but you need to buff your cards. This will help you pick up a card so you can buff all the other cards and then play it again so you're no longer board locked. Things like that. I think it really helps in the end game because sometimes you might get board locked by turn 12 and you don't want to do that. And I see people make that mistake and this can help correct it. Top shelf, obviously that is great if you still need direction, if you can maybe find a triple of a six drop or there's a lot of different six drops that are just really useful. So if maybe you're not tier six yet or you can find a triple tier six, pick this card up. Obviously that is all dependent on what your board looks like. Last is all that glitters. Um, <laughs> this card's interesting. It makes a random minion in Bob's Tavern golden. And I always hear people say like, oh, just buy all the minions out and then play it and then sell and then buy it. And waste the whole turn. You spend all your gold doing that. You can get really unlucky. Now there is odds that like you get a decent shop and you use it on something that works well. It basically allows you to discover a minion of a higher tier. That's the same thing as top shelf, which is discover a six drop. But this is going to cost you three gold because you have to buy something that may not be good because again it's a random minion so i don't love this card but oh that's kind of fun good content i guess let's talk about the fourth prize which happens on turn 16. there are uh seven of them okay i will say that i have very rarely got to play with these cards so i don't have a lot of information on it uh, I have, I will tell you what I have used in the past. The first one is friends and family discount for the rest of the game. Minions in Bob's Tavern cost one less. Very good for Millhouse if you're going Caligos build. Um, everything's free for Millhouse. It's good if you're doing a build that you have to just buy a bunch of minions. For example, Caligos. This is very, very, very good for Caligos build. Just buying every single battle cry minion for one less, selling it for one. So it's free for Millhouse and costs one for any other hero, so super sick. Open bar is first five refreshes costs zero. You only pick this if you have to find something. You have to find something to make your build work. Like you're facing a George in your final battle and you you have not found that ghoul, or you need to find this one triple, your Goldrin, to make your comp work. So yeah, only take open bar if, if, if there's something very specific that you need. 
Raise the stakes, make a friendly minion gold and return it to hand. This is super good. Nova agrees. This is super good. By this time, you should already have a tavern tier six minion if you are on turn 20 or like a five, but probably a six drop is what you need to golden. And then you get to discover another six drop. This works with so many comps. If you're going macaw comp, you can either golden a golden or a macaw or a baron. Yeah. So highly recommend that one. Fresh tab, refresh your gold. So that just gives you 20 gold on the turn. That's better than open bar because open bar gives you five gold on the turn. So keep that in mind. Argent Bra Braggart is gain attack and health to match the highest in your battlefield. So this is like a size minion. By the late game, a lot of times you have a bunch of size minions and then you have to fill out your empty spots with divine shield or ghoul or something. I just don't know how many times this will fit into your board by the end game. So I'm not sure how good this is, but yeah, I think other things might be better because I guess it just kind of depends on what you're facing for your opponent. If you have like a weak spot on your board, maybe it would work. Big winner is discover a dark moon prize from each of the previous tavern turns. I've taken this before. It's pretty nice because you can get ice block from it from the previous turn. Keep in mind that when you do prize turns, it feels like you have no time. And with big winner, you have no time because you have to discover so many prizes. You have to discover four. You feel very pressed for time with this one. So keep that in mind. And last one, give a dog a bone. Give a friendly minion, divine shield, wind fury, and 1010. Very good if you can pick up a poison minion. So highly recommend give a dog a bone. I really like that card. Or if you have a big cleave, give a dog a bone. It's very nice for that. Those are all the prizes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hoped me kind of walking you through them helps you out. Remember, this isn't just auto picking. You can't just like auto pick the best spell. Every single spell depends on where you're at in the game, how your board's going, how your games have been going. It really makes you think about where, where you need to go with your game. And so just Keep in mind on your prize turns, do not auto play. Really think, am I ahead, behind, where do I need to go? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a thumbs up and a comment below. Appreciate it and have a good day. Bye. Size check. What does that mean? Size matters, so people can check out what size they are by typing the command size. See if they're chonkers or dinkers or average or growers or showers.